Your Majesty, dear Laureate Yves Maier, Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, friends of science. On behalf of the Norwegian Academy of Science and Letters, I have the pleasure and honor of welcoming you all to the Abel Prize Award Ceremony for 2017. This year's Prize winner, Professor Yves Mayer, receives the prize for his pivotal role in the development of the mathematical theory of wavelets. Wavelets are mathematical objects that look a bit like the spiky blips that appear on a seismograph or a heart wave monitor. When wavelets are mathematically combined with an unknown signal, they can be used to extract information about that other signal. Wavelets, like their more, more famous cousins, the Fourier transforms, are widely used in signal processing. The pioneering work of Professor Meyer on the theory of wavelets has had profound impact. Mayer's work allowed scientists and engineers to create unique wavelet transforms that were ideally suited to specific signals. Hence, his work is one of the newer discoveries in mathematics that has rapidly been applied to many practical applications. It is rare that scientific results are put to practical use so soon after their discovery. It shows us that the two are in principle not far apart. There is no great divide between basic and applied research. Wavelets are used for applications ranging from image compression, including some JPEG files, to the recent LIGO detection of gravitational waves from the merging of black holes. I could also quote from the committee's citation, harmonic analysis, data compression, noise reduction, medical imaging, archiving, digital cinema, and deconvolution of the Hubble Space Telescope images. Wavelets are particularly useful when the goal is to discard some extraneous information, such as low frequency noise from the nearby surroundings, while keeping the important signal, like the brief blip of gravitational waves from two black holes colliding. Wavelets also aid in detecting edges because they easily reveal where a signal is changing rapidly, such as the lines of a fingerprint. 
The Norwegian Academy of Science and Letters is pleased and honored to have the responsibility for awarding the Abel Prize. The Academy's main mission is to support the advancement of science and scholarship. And our strategy is to contribute to good research policy, to disseminate knowledge as a basis for decisions, and to strengthen the best research. The Academy has appointed an Abel board that also has the task of promoting interest in mathematics among children and young people by supporting projects in kindergartens, schools, and science centers. The initiatives include the Norwegian Mathematical Olympics for upper secondary pupils and the Unge Abel contest for teams in year nine. This year's young winners are here in the audience. You are important ambassadors for mathematics. Fostering an interest in mathematics in young people also requires good teachers. Nils Henrik Abel's teacher, Bernd Mikal Holmbo, was very important to Abel's career. To emphasize the role of teachers, the Holmbo Memorial Prize is awarded annually to teachers selected by the Norwegian Mathematical Council. This year's Holmbo Prize winner is Hanan Mohammed Abdel Rahman, teacher at Lofsru Secondary School in Oslo. An important partner in this work is Petroleum Geoservices, PGS. PGS provides ample support to stimulate interest in mathematics, especially among children and young people in Norway and developing countries, specifically Ghana. This is a prime example of a long-term public-private collaboration. This year, there is a special bond between the Abel Prize laureate and PGS since the advanced mathematics of signal processing by wavelets is directly applicable to the world of seismic imaging. Professor Yves Mayer and all the previous Abel laureates are important role models for young researchers. The Heidelberg Laureate Forum is an annual event where former winners of prizes in mathematics and computer science meet talented young researchers from around the world for mutual inspiration. I would like to thank the Heidelberg Laureate Forum Foundation for having taken the initiative to arrange these annual meetings. Today is the 15th time the Abel Prize is awarded. The Abel Committee, with members nominated by, international, by the International Mathematical Union and the European Mathematical Society, deserves much of the honor for the recognition that the prize has attained internationally. I would like to take this opportunity to thank the Abel Committee, headed by Professor Jon Rognes, for their excellent work. The Norwegian Academy of Science and Letters would also like to thank the Norwegian mathematics community in general and everyone who promotes the importance of mathematics in society. Our knowledge society is dependent on outstanding research of the kind that the Abel Prize recognizes. The award ceremony is an excellent opportunity to draw attention to this. Last but not least, the Abel Board works tirelessly to showcase mathematics and the importance of mathematics I would especially like to thank the chair of the Abel Board, Prof.
professor Christian Ramestad, for his dedication and hard work. After this ceremony, there is a reception at the Norske Teatre. You are all heartily welcome to attend. Distinguished guests and most honorable prize winner Yves Mayer, this is a great day, not only for you, but for the field of mathematics, for all of us who are here today, and for society at large. Congratulations with the prize.
The day they discovered the signal, the gravitational waves, they sent me an email telling that it is based on my work. The idea that your work has been used for this magnificent discovery is something that is thrilling. Yeah. <laughs> you cannot believe it. The discovery of Wavelet took me three months. My main achievements are outside Wavelet. The solution of Calderon conjecture, which lasted seven years. The beauty of the life here was related to freedom. I have friends from Ecole Normale Supérieure. I have kept a relation with them all my life. Merci. Merci. I could be happy with that to jump from the top of this window to the top. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we did some radical things for showing them that I cannot be impressed by, uh, by uh, anything. I taught uh, as a teacher three years. That's something which was a shock, a surprise for uh, my schoolmates here. The best is to combine teaching and research. There is a possibility where you are only doing research, you have no teaching at all. I never did that because I would be ashamed. Because if you belong to the that, it means that you have to find a theorem per day. You know, because you are paid only for doing research, and then the pressure is so, uh, so terrible that, that that would dry my mind immediately. Uh, mathematicians have a tendency to believe that they know the truth about everything outside mathematics. So that's a general uh, tendency of mathematicians, which is a little bit ridiculous. Les dossiers des académiciens vivants is a name of an, a living or a dead academician. No, but I, I, I do not want to read it. Uh, because if I would read what people think about me, there could, there could be fights, you know. Gay Lussac Berthold. I did not like Cauchy. He was royalist, while Galois was left wing. And here in mathematics, I am not reading in a systematic way, but uh, I feel it is not good. I prefer to think by myself. Very. But uh, I wouldn't advise people not to read, because if you do not read, you reinvent the wheel. I loved attacking a problem with just bare hands, you know, without weapons. Just bare hands, you know, just the fight, the true fight. And finding completely distinct ideas than the traditional ideas towards this problem. I've done that all my life. I would never advise a student. It is too dangerous to behave that way. Your Majesty, Laureate Yves Meyer, Your Excellencies, Ladies and Gentlemen. Professor Yves Meyer has made important contributions to many areas of mathematics on topics such as quasi-crystals, singular integral operators, paraproducts, and oscillating fluid flow. Each of these achievements would earn him the title a great analyst. However, for the Abel Prize, we will emphasize one particular contribution, namely his key role in the so-called wavelet revolution. 
over a few years in the 1980s, a large number of ideas and tools from a variety of fields of research were unified by Meyer, his students, and his collaborators in the form of a coherent and complete mathematical theory of wavelets. The predictive power of this synthesis has led to new results and perspectives in an astonishingly broad range of scientific fields. Most likely, no other mathematical breakthrough made in living memory has had a greater applied impact. What is a wavelet? As a function of time, it is a signal, say a sound, that only lasts for a short period and only vibrates within a small range of frequencies. Wavelet theory concerns the description of general signals in terms of the translates and dilates of one fixed wavelet. Yves Meyer was not the first nor the last to think about wavelets. Precursors were considered by mathematicians and scientists such as Alfred Haar, Denis Gabor, and Jan Olof Strömberg. However, Yves Meyer was the first to recognize the deep connection between the wavelet transforms created around 1980 by the engineer Jean Morlet and the physicist Alex Grossman, and the theory of singular integral operators studied 20 years earlier by the mathematicians Alberto Calderon and Antoni Sigmund. For this insight, Yves Meyer was the right person at the right time. In a first synthesis, starting in 1985, Meyer and his students and collaborators were able to create wavelet analysis. This provided a novel way of studying function spaces with applications to topics such as multifractals, turbulence, statistical estimation, and data compression. In order to extend the theory from functions of one-dimensional time to functions of multi-dimensional space, Yves Meyer and his longtime collaborator, Ronald Raphael Koifmann, introduced a formalism of linked sequences of projection operators. Stéphane Mala recognized this formalism as being analogous to algorithms used, being used in signal processing and in computer vision. In a second synthesis, starting in 1986, Malat and Meyer created multi-resolution analysis, which coupled the theoretical power of wavelet theory with a very efficient cascading filter method called the fast wavelet transform for making calculations with wavelets. And soon, wavelets were not rare treasures discovered by good fortune, but objects that could be designed and tailor-made to a specific purpose. By 1987, Ingrid Daubechy had found the shortest possible filters suitable for the analysis of signals with a given degree of regularity. And by 1989, Albert Cohen had characterized mathematically which cascading filters correspond to numerically stable wavelet transforms. So the combination of Meyer's non-redundant and often sparse representation of data in terms of orthonormal wavelet bases, Malas' fast algorithm, and Dobichy's compactly supported wavelets provided a universal scientific tool that was rapidly adopted for theoretical and applied purposes in mathematics and in its many neighboring fields. 
The wavelet revolution was an exceptional time with strong interactions going both ways between pure mathematics and a wide range of applied areas. Yves Meyer's expertise and curiosity played a pivotal role in the earliest years of this interaction. Some years later, he had moved on to other fields, but the echoes from this initial burst are still heard, both within mathematics and throughout its applications. It is this resounding burst that we celebrate today. So I now ask Professor Yves Meyer to come forward to receive the Abel Prize for 2017 from His Majesty King Harald of Norway. And I would like to ask His Majesty to come forward and present the Abel Prize to Professor Yves Meyer. Your Majesty, Minister, Excellencies, Ladies and Gentlemen, today we are celebrating the memory of Niels Henrik Abel. Let us take this opportunity for addressing the key issue of the dialogue between mathematics and the other sciences. Here is my own experience. I feel that, as a mathematician, I am torn between two conflicting duties. I'm expected to solve some of the hard problems, and I need to communicate the new tools I've built with other scientists. During the first part of my scientific life, I neglected the second goal, whereas I believe I have succeeded in this goal during the second part of my research life, particularly as regards wavelets. At the beginning of my mathematical career, I was working completely alone. Harmonic analysis did not exist in Strasbourg. I wrote my PhD dissertation in complete isolation. When I moved to number theory, I, I met Charles Piso, and I unveiled the splendid patterns that would 15 years later be known as quasi-crystals. The book I wrote on the subject in 1970 did not find an audience and was finally pulped by Elsevier. Dan Schechman did not benefit from my findings. In 1974, I was quite discouraged, but I had the good fortune to have Rafi Koifman provide some guidance. Rafi said we should solve Calderon conjectures. It took us seven years. I often discuss this work with Alberto Calderon and Anthony Zygmunt, which was inspiring and delightful. When Rafi and I achieved, it was immediately applauded and used by all the mathematicians working in the field. I joined the wavelet group led by Ingrid Dobeschies 
Alex Grossman and Jean Morlet in 1984. In this setting, I was able to communicate with people coming from almost all scientific fields. While my discovery of orthonormal wavelet basis gave a new and unexpected impetus to the field. Earlier work by Jan Olof Strömberg was put in a new perspective. This exciting program is still developing as it will be seen tomorrow in the talks by Emmanuel Candès, Ingrid Dobeschis, and Stéphane Mala. Nowadays, I have returned to pure mathematics and I am collaborating with Alexander Olewski. The success of my research is mostly due to my friends. Let me single out Rafi Kaufmann and praise a friendship over more than 40 years. It is also due to my incredible students. I share so much with them. We are a family. I wish to thank the selection committee for choosing me for this prestigious award and I accept it with immense gratitude. At the same time, I consider the award to also honor the theory and application of wavelets, and in this sense, I am the representative of a large group of scholars.
Thank you.